So uh, what we are going to do now is uh, basically go and look into the different scenarios. So you can see that we have discussed four cases and let's take uh, each of them one after the other. So this is the expression that we had uh, as a final derivation. I would suggest that all of you can try to, in fact, uh, remember this. And based on this, we are going to do the derivations and we are going to check each of the cases. So let's uh, take up the first case. And in the first case, we have it as beta is equal to zero, or we can also say that B is equal to zero. Now in this particular case, the argument that we have provided is that uh, basically it will be a simple harmonic motion and it will basically have you know, oscillation. So we are going to discuss the oscillation case in this case. So before we derive in simple words, as I've discussed in the last class, oscillation means after you put beta is equal to zero, you should actually get a final relation, which should be a function of cos or a function of sine. So we are going to do that and we're going to see whether this actually happens or not. So let's uh, start with this. So let's take up beta is equal to zero. And if we take beta is equal to zero, this is our expression on top. And we can say that if this is zero, this will become one. So I can say that the term outside the bracket is one and within bracket, it would be C1 e to the power. Now you see, this is root over, there's an entire root here. And uh, you know, if this is zero, this is root over of minus omega naught square. So there is a minus of root, so that can be written as i. I hope all of you can recall that if you write it down as minus one, that would be nothing but i. So this is i, and omega naught square inside root, this was zero, so omega naught square inside root, it will become omega naught. And then we can, you know, put the t which we have. Plus, uh, we can write down it for the second term. That would be nothing but minus c2. There is a minus outside the root. And then there is an i because, again, beta is equal to 0. We get minus root of omega naught square. And then this would be nothing but omega naught. Okay. And I think I missed out a t here. So we should be having a t. And then we have a 2. So this is my expression when I put beta is equal to zero. Now we have to remember certain things which you might have done in your lower classes. And one of the most important relation is e to the power i theta. And if you can recall, e to the power i theta can be written as sine of, or I should write it down the other way. So e to the power i theta can be written as cos of theta plus i sine theta. So we have this now, we can in fact uh, replace it here and uh, we can write it, right? So we can, let's, let, let me just uh, kind of uh, modify this a bit. I can take this as, So now we are having this uh, relation and we what we can do is we can you know do the replacements here. So let's uh, try doing it. Okay, it's not going to be very complicated. It's just simple replacement. Right? So what you can do is you can write it down equal to and let's write down this part first and we can write it down as you know, C1 e to the power i omega naught t. So C1 would be something which is common and then in place of theta, we have got omega naught t. So what we can write down here is cos of omega naught t plus the sine term, that would be i. And of course, we have to write down the c term. So it's i c1 sine of omega naught t. So this is the expansion for this. And then we are going to go expand the second part, right? So the second part would be in terms of C2. So this is C2 cos of omega naught t. But please remember there's a minus, right? So what you can do is we can write down a minus here. And then we can write it down as C2 
high sine of omega naught. Because this is minus psi omega naught, right? Let's just combine the cos term and the sine term. So for the cos term, it would be C1 plus C2. Then it would be nothing but cos of omega naught t. And then let's take it as plus and write it down as i. And here it is C1. And then there is minus C2. These are the two terms, constant. And then this would be sine of omega naught t. Now, you know, C1 and C2 both are constants. So what you can do is we can combine them and take a new constant. Let's say it's C, and this is cos of omega naught t. This is the normal adjustments that you're supposed to do, plus, and then I can write it down as i, and then C1 minus C2 is another constant. Let me write it down as d, and this would be sine of omega So we have this, and now what we can do is we can actually combine in both these terms, okay? Uh, there is a relation which you might already know in trigonometry. If I have something like cos of A plus B, I can write it down as cos A, cos B minus sine A, sine B, right? This is something which is common. Here we have a cos term and the sine term. So what I want to say here is that you see, we have a cos term here and we do have a sine term here. We have a cos term here and we have a sine term here. What we need is one more sine term and one more cos term. So that means these constants C and D can be written in this form such a way so that you can actually combine them both. Okay. So uh, maybe, or, or I will just write it down as an example, okay? Uh, what we can do is we can combine C, we can take up C, and maybe I can write it down as, let's say, A cos of phi. Okay, C is a constant, phi is a constant angle, so I can write it down as A cos phi. And uh, then D, I can write it down as, let's say, A sine phi. I can put a minus sign as well. So this is again a constant which we have assumed. So we can replace this here in place of C and replace this here, here. And then we can actually get our curves. So what we can do here is in place of C, we can write it down as A cos phi cos of omega naught t, where this entire term is a constant, right? Plus, and we have taken a minus to be the constant here. So I can write it down as minus i. In place of d, I can write it down as a sine i into sine of omega t. It just depends on our choice of constant. So we can do it that way. Here, you know, a sine phi is the constant that we have. What you can do now is we can, you know, take a common. And if we do that, we have got it as cos phi cos omega t, okay? And, you know, even if I, I consider this term I, I can include it in this constant, I C1 minus C2. So maybe I can take D to be imaginary and, you know, I will drop this, this off. I, I don't need because D let it include I C1 minus C2. So that can be D. Okay, so I won't take D anymore. I don't take the I term now. So this is A cos phi cos omega T. A sine phi sine omega t. Okay, I hope you're not confused here. And D, I'm taking it as I C1 minus C2. And C is nothing but C1 plus C2. Right, just adjustments. So we have got it here. A is common. Then we'll cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Cos A cos B minus sine A sine B is nothing but cos of A plus B. So it is nothing but can be written as cos of omega naught t plus so this is our expression for x displacement. So you can see that this is basically our cost function, right? If this is a cost function, that means it has to be periodic, or we can say it has to be simple harmonic in nature. So this is simple harmonic in nature. And of course, we can say that if it's simple harmonic, there will be oscillations because it's a cost function. And do we see any exponential term here? No. Right, it's just a constant a cos of omega naught t plus phi. That means there is going to be no damping. So this is the case where we basically have no damping. 
no damping because you know beta is the damping constant and that is considered to be zero that means there is no effect of damping now this is an ideal case not reality reality you know there will be damping you have a pendulum with oscillator going to damp and eventually the oscillation is going to be zero or the amplitude is going to be zero so that's the first case that we have discussed in the next class we are going to discuss the other 